Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. On the last video, I got the dent out that was on the bell. The dent did leave one crack in the bell that goes all the way through the metal, and there are a couple other smaller cracks that did not go through the metal, so I'm going to leave those alone. But the one hole that is in the metal will need to be patched. There are several different ways to patch this hole, and I was considering which way would be the best, and I also talked to one of my friends who's a band instrument repair technician. He and I both agreed it would be best to put some silver solder in the hole to fill it. The negative side to silver solder is that it needs to be heated up to a very high temperature and it may burn some of the silver plating that is on the bell. But there are ways of limiting the risk of burning the silver plating, so I'm going to try that method and I'll see what happens. The positive things about silver solder is that it will be pretty close to the same color as the silver plating. Also, it should make the least difference in the appearance of the instrument when it's done. Here are the cracks in the bell. There is one right there, and that one did not go all the way through. It just started to crack, but it did not go all the way through. And the same with this one. On the other hand, this one did go all the way through. That one will be a big problem if it's not fixed. It's hard to see in the video, but there is a lot of tarnish and stuff in there that needs to come out. When you solder, you need clean metal to work with. So I'm going to clean that out with some files. This is my set of needle files. You can tell that they've been well used over the years, and they have different shapes on them, and most of them come to a point at the end so that you can get into very small areas. I'm going to use a needle file to clean out the tarnish and the other stuff that's in this crack, and it will open the metal up a little bit more. I want to take off as little metal as possible, though, so I'm going to carefully clean that out. And I may need to switch up the files. Let's try this one, see if that can fit in there better. I'm going to clean that up as good as I can. And the reason you clean up the metal is so that the solder can flow. Because the solder does not flow to places where there is tarnish and other dirt. I cleaned out the crack as good as I could, and I can see clean metal in there. So I know that the solder will stick to it now. When you solder with soft solder, you use liquid flux, and that works well. The problem is it boils away at the temperatures you need to get at to use silver solder. So there's another type of flux that you use for silver solder. This does not boil away at a high temperature, so it works well for silver solder. The purpose for flux is to keep the metal from oxidizing. What happens when you heat up metal is that the oxygen that's in the air wants to adhere to the bell or whatever is being heated up. At room temperature, it happens very slowly, but once you heat it up to a few hundred degrees, it happens immediately. Once metal oxidizes, the solder will not stick to it, so the flux is used to keep the oxygen away from the metal so that the solder will adhere to the metal. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that silver plating can burn. It does not burn like wood burns. It does not make flames. But what it does is it turns black and it makes little bubbles in the plating, and it ruins the plating. And that happens because oxygen gets to it. I'm going to use the flux to get the silver solder to stick to the metal inside the hole. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some flux around a larger area so that the metal around it will not oxidize. And if the metal does not oxidize, it will keep the silver plating from burning. Or at least it will slow down the process a lot. I only need the heat in one small area right where the crack is so that I can put the solder in there. But when I heat that up, the heat is going to move through the bell of the instrument and it's going to heat up more than just that area. Metal transfers heat very well and I want the heat to stay in one spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some wet cloths and I'm going to put them around the crack. So what's going to happen when I heat up where the crack is and the heat transfers, when it gets to one of those wet cloths, the water is going to suck up the heat and the heat is going to stay in one spot. That also should keep the heat from doing damage in a large area. Now it still may burn a little bit around right where the crack is, but it should be a very small place and hopefully it does not spread too far. I got the bell set up. It's on a fireproof surface and I got some blocks to hold it up so that the crack is pointing up. I have the rags around the crack to keep the heat to a small area and I have the flux over the whole surface so that hopefully it keeps it from oxidizing and burning. I'm going to turn the flame so it's fairly hot and I'm going to heat that up. I'm going to watch, see what's here. Okay, we're probably, yeah. I have some solder on there. I'm waiting for it to flow into there. Yeah, just a minute. I'm going to try that again, and I'm going to turn the bell around because I noticed that it seems like it's burning 
the metal on the side. If it's going to burn, I'd rather have it burn towards the side where you can't see it when it's put back on the instrument. The first attempt did not work too well, so I'm going to try it again. I'm going to heat that up to temperature. Okay, and then get in there. The solder does not want to flow too well. I don't want it there. Solder does not want to flow too well. Come on, get in there. What's happening is the cloths are sucking up too much of the heat, I think. I may need to move the cloths back a little bit. But it might, it might be working. Come on. Come on, get in there. Yeah, I think I'm going to need to move the cloths back a little bit so that, because it's sucking up too much of the heat. I don't think it's getting hot enough. I'm going to put some more flux on this. I moved the cloths back a little bit so it won't suck up the heat quite as fast. And I'm going to try this again. We'll get it up to temperature. See if the solder goes in there. It's still not going in there. Probably not up to temperature yet. Oh, solder got away. Okay. Still not quite there. There's a bead of solder on it. I don't know if you can see that. There is a little bit of solder that came off of the uh, the part of this, this part of the solder, and it's not flowing in there. It's just a bead of solder. Come on, go into the crack. Okay, I think it might finally be starting to go in there. I think the solder is flowing into the crack. Okay, I think we're good. I let the metal sit for a while so it would cool off. And it does look like the solder went into the crack. Now there's some solder on top of the crack too. There's a little bead of solder. And I'm going to have to clean that up. And I'm going to file that down so that it's level with the rest of the bell. I also have to clean up the flux. But I think that this will work. I cleaned off the flux and I can see in there better. And the solder did go into the crack. Now all I need to do is file down that bead of solder. But when I was working on that, I did notice that those cracks that I thought did not go all the way through, they do go all the way through. So I will also need to put some solder into those two cracks. The good news is, is that the plating did not burn. It is a little duller than it was before, but I think that once I polish it, that should shine it up again. When you work on instruments, and especially old instruments, you never know what you're going to find when you start repairing them, but you do know that you will find something. Almost always there's more to a repair than it looks like when you first see the instrument. So I will set the bell up like I did before and repair the other two cracks. I have the bell set up and ready to fill in the last two holes. I think what happened is the holes were there before, but they were probably filled up with dirt and paint and whatever else was on there. But then when I soldered the one crack, it got so hot that it burned that stuff away. Because the stuff burned away, the holes opened up, so I'm going to fill them in. The bell is set up the same way as before, and I'm going to try to put as little heat on there as I can and uh, still make it work. I can't really put the solder right into the heat because where the flame is, it's going to melt the solder really fast before it even hits the metal. So I need to get the, the, the metal up to temperature and kind of move the flame away a little bit. And this job is rather tricky because of the way it's set up. Uh, the, yeah, the, um, the solder melted before I even got it to the, the metal. But as soon as I take the flame away, it's going to cool off the point where the solder will not go in there. Come on. Heat up. I have all the three cracks filled in, and now I have to file down the bead of solder that's stuck on there. It would have been best not to get too much solder on there, but the way it was set up it was really hard to do that. So anyway, I have to pull the solder off now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file it down with one of my needle files, and to keep from filing the plating on the instrument, I'm going to put masking tape over that. 
and then I'm going to file this until it is down to the surface of the metal. I've been filing for about 20 minutes and it's time to take this off. That's what it looks like. And after I'm done polishing it, these spots should probably blend in better with the finish that's around it. Now that I have the cracks patched, it's time to solder the bell back onto the rest of the cornet. Usually I do not take the bell off of a cornet to get the dents out, but these ones are so bad and it required so much heat that the bell needed to come off in order to get that dent out. There are a few other smaller dents in the bell, uh, but those can be taken out after it gets put back together. I'm going to solder this back together, and there are four solder joints that hold the bell on to the rest of the instrument. I'm going to put that on there and solder it together. When you solder things together, they should be tight against each other, and there should not be the large gap like that. The bell got dented, these braces got shifted around and bent, and you can see that this has a little curve in it where it got bent. So I'm going to have to straighten these braces out so that they fit onto the bell better. I'm going to start by pushing this together, and the flange metal is usually quite soft and easy to bend. There's still too large of a gap, so I'm going to pull harder on this. Okay. I can work with this. There's still too much gap, but I can take care of that with a flange burnisher. This is the wooden assembly mandrel, and it holds the instruments out in the open where you can work on them easier. There are four solder joints that need to be soldered. These two, and these two. I'm going to leave these two solder joints for later, and the reason why is because the flanges are not flush with the bell, so I still need to do some work on those to get those to be flush with the bell. So I'm going to solder these two together, and that way I can stop holding on to the instrument. Right now I'm holding it so that it doesn't fall apart. I have some solder clamps I'm going to use to hold the instrument together while I solder. I'm going to clamp a few of those onto the instrument. There are the solder clamps holding the instrument together while I solder. Before I solder, I have to make sure that everything is lined up. Because once you solder, you can unsolder it, but you'd rather not, because that just makes extra work. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to solder these two joints. I have positioned the camera so that you can look over my shoulder while I work. So I have to heat it up to temperature, at least close to temperature, and then put some flux on there. Get the solder, and I'm going to heat that up with just enough heat to make the solder flow into the joint. Okay, there we go. Okay, I probably need a little more. You always have to be careful about using too much solder because you do not want to, the solder to make a mess. You want there to be enough that it does not leak. Oops, I dropped the solder. You do not, you want to make sure that there is not enough to make a mess, but there is, is enough to fill in the joint and so that it doesn't leak. Now the next solder joint. Heat that up a little bit, put some flux on it. Heat it up just a little more. Okay, that was a tiny bit too much solder, but it, most of it went back into there. So I think we're good. Okay, yep. That one is done. Now I'm going to spray the solder joints with some ammonia, and that will help to neutralize the flux. These flanges are still not flush with the bell, and I can't really just shape them to fit like they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called tack soldering. I'm going to solder just a little bit of this flange, and after I've soldered that, then I'm going to use a flange burnisher to make it flush with the bell. So right now I'm going to tack solder this. What I'm doing is soldering this where the flange does touch the bell. That way I can burnish the rest of it so that it fits on the bell too. So I just need to, okay that's good. Now the solder is not all the way around but it is where the metal is touching metal. This is called a flange burnisher. I'm going to use that to bend the braces. Okay, there, that is good. I'm pushing them onto the bell so that they fit with the bell. Okay, I think that is good. And 
Now there's very little gap between the bell and the flange of the brace, so I'm going to solder the rest of this brace on. There's one thing I'm going to do before that though. I'm going to solder this brace, or at least tack solder this brace together too, because if I start soldering this and it heats up that solder, it's going to melt and this thing will probably spring back. So I'm going to make sure that both of these have at least a little bit of solder before I start soldering one of them. I'm going to find a place where the metal is touching metal, about right here it is. So I'm going to put just a tiny bit of solder on right there. And then put some flux on there. Get the solder, heat it up. And I don't want a lot, just enough to hold it. Right there, that should do it. Now I can solder this joint without it coming apart. Now I have to solder this whole brace together. And I'm going to have to be careful because uh, when you solder on silver, the solder can go farther than you want it to and uh, mess up the silver plating. So I want to be careful just to keep it in the solder joint where it's supposed to be. Oh. What you heard there was the solder joint coming loose, the tack solder joint. But that's okay, it did not move much, it just moved a little tiny bit. Okay, I'm going to flip it over to see if the solder is going all the way around. Yes, it is. So I'm going to put it back there. And solder is most of the way under the brace. There's still a little gap over here. Okay, that gap is filled. And at the tip, there we go. Except when it cooled off, it's, it um, drew it back in though. Okay, that should be good for that solder joint. Now I'm going to take the flange burnisher and finish the other brace. And I'm pushing the metal so that it goes up against the other metal. I got the solder joints done and I just need to clean them up and this discoloration on here will come off when it gets polished. Thank you for watching. Next Friday I'm going to remove all the rest of the dents that are on the instrument. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.